So in this video, we're going to talk about the laser output power above threshold, above threshold. And what that means, if you don't already know, uh, hopefully should be clear by the end of the video. Uh, but for now, we're just going to say that this is uh, when we're injecting a lot of current, so a lot of carriers. And in this case, if we've got our laser cavity, uh, it's got some, it's got a bunch of photons bouncing around inside. So it's got a certain number of photons bouncing around inside and it's got some mirrors and whatnot. Um, now above threshold, when we inject enough current uh, or we generate enough photons, there's so many photons within the cavity that virtually all recombination is stimulated recombination. Uh, so R is approximately R stim or the total recombination is approximately equal to the stimulated emission. Uh, and similarly, we can neglect this sp any spontaneous emission that we might have because it's just so dwarfed in comparison to the stimulated emission because we have so many photons inside our cavity. So any electrons that make it into the conduction band uh, somehow by, by injection are almost immediately stimulated uh, using via stimulated emission to go back down to the valence band. And so if we want to calculate the total output power then, which we do, uh, then we start with our rate equations. So we derived previously one rate equation for the carriers uh, and one rate equation for the photons. And so if we start with the carrier rate equation, as we did in the last video, uh, we know that this is dn dt is equal to eta i, our injection efficiency times our current, divided by q times our volume, minus our total recombination. And again, for now, we're interested in steady state. So when the lasers had time to equilibrate, so we expect the time derivative of this carrier density to be equal to zero. And we can also rearrange it, putting the total recombination on the other side. So our total recombination is just equal to this guy. And this should be the active region volume. But we just said that if we've got enough photons, then our total recombination is just approximately equal to our stimulated recombination. So we can just replace this guy on the left-hand side with our stimulated recombination. So where's my staples button? Uh, that, was, that was pretty easy as far as the carrier rate equation goes. Uh, now for the, for the photon rate equation, we can do the same exact thing. Uh, so our photon rate equation is just this gamma times VG times our gain times the number of photons uh, plus this beta spontaneous, this is our spontaneous recombination term, uh, minus the number of photons divided by the photon lifetime. But I also just said that our stimulated emission is so, so much greater than our spontaneous recombination that we can completely ignore this term. So we're just going to cross it out. And uh, this term, just to be uh, totally explicit, this is just our stimulated emission times the active region volume. And similarly, this term on the left, or the, this other term on the right, is our stimulated emission times our active region volume. So our spontaneous emission times our active region volume is this term, and our stimulated emission times our active region volume is this term. And again, at steady state, this should be equal to zero. And so if we rearrange it and rewrite stuff down below, uh, we can say that the number of photons should be equal to gamma times VG times the gain times the number of photons. Now this is a little weird um, because we've got a, a number of photons here and a number of photons here and uh, I thought we were solving for the number of photons. Oh, and sorry, I'm missing a, missing a tau P right here. Uh, and indeed we are trying to solve for the number of photons, uh, but we can actually get that from this equation, from this stimulated emission equation. So this photon rate equation uh, actually doesn't tell us, ironically, anything about the photon density. Uh, so if we cancel out the photon density, we can actually reinterpret this equation now as telling us what the gain is. So the gain is just equal to 1 over gamma times our photon lifetime times our group velocity of our photons. Is mathematically, like we know this equation is true. And we know it can only be true if the number of photons is equal to zero, which it's not. Physically, we, we're fairly certain of that. Uh, or if the, this gain is equal to 1 over gamma tau p times our group velocity. 
And this is what's called the threshold gain. Uh, and why this is called the threshold gain, I'll explain in, uh, in a future video on the threshold gain uh, and, the, and the threshold current. So now we just need to plug this into our, uh, our equation for a stimulated emission, and we're pretty much done. Uh, so let's, let's start with uh, what we got from our carrier rate equation, that the stimulated emission uh, was equal to eta i, i over qv, and we're going to plug in this term here for our stimulated emission times our active region volume. So let's multiply both sides. Uh, so our stim times the active region volume times the active region volume. And so that's, that's nice. They cancel. Uh, and so now all we need to do uh, is plug in this term here for our uh, just in this in this location on the on the left hand side of this equation and so if we do that uh, and we also plug in the value for our gain we can solve that equation for the number of photons uh, which is going to ultimately allow us to calculate the output power so the number of photons in the cavity uh, we'll get is just equal to this eta i times gamma times i tau p over q and so again inside our laser cavity this is just physically the number of photons that we're able to store. So the number of photons that exist at any time point inside our laser cavity. And if we want to calculate the output power, uh, again, all we need to know is the number of photons that are able to leak out of this cavity per unit time. And that's just given by uh, our photon lifetime, tau p. And then if we want to convert this number of photons per unit time into an energy, we just need to multiply by the photon energy. And so doing that, uh, so plugging in what we know the number of photons is equal, equal to, we can get a final expression for the output power. This is just equal to a to i times gamma, and these are both unitless, so you can think of them like efficiencies, uh, times h bar omega over q times the current. And this looks an awfully lot like what we got before for the, uh, output power below threshold. So uh, just rewriting that here, the output power below threshold we got was equal to eta i times eta spontaneous times beta spontaneous times this h bar omega over q times the current. And so all we've really done is we've changed the slope of the line. So uh, if we were to draw the output power as a function of current, just like we did before, so now it's the total output power as a function of current. Uh, initially, when we're below threshold, we've got some slope, and this is determined by, uh, so we, let's just divide this by h bar omega over q. So this slope is this eta i times eta spontaneous times beta spontaneous, but uh, beta spontaneous is on the order of like 10 to the minus four, uh, eta is on the order of like 0.7, and eta i is uh, probably around 0.9, maybe, maybe as high as 1. Um, but then when we hit this thing called threshold, or eventually when we, when we transition from having predominantly spontaneous emission, or predominantly spontaneous emission, to predominantly stimulated emission, the slope of this curve changes. So the slope of this curve is now uh, just eta i times gamma. And this is much, much larger because a to i, we said, was on the order of 0.9 to 1. And gamma is typically on the order of like 0.3-ish. So this is way, way bigger than our initial spontaneous emission slope. And so what it looks like in this region, we don't really know yet. Uh, but we're going to be exploring this in future videos. So this is uh, at or near what's called threshold. And uh, we also need to make a, a slight correction. Uh, this output power is uh, asymptotically correct, but we want to, to make it fully correct, we need to delay this curve. So we need to subtract some value. Let's call it I threshold. So let's call this value I threshold. And that just means that this curve here has to be delayed by a certain amount uh, in order for us to actually in order for this to make any sense. Otherwise, we'd expect this curve to intersect the origin, which it clearly doesn't because we've got two different regions of operation. 
And so in the next couple videos, we'll be exploring what exactly happens in this region near threshold and how we transition from having uh, a relatively low output power uh, for a certain injected current to a very high one. And so that's, that's going to be the subject of future videos. And we'll also figure out what exactly this threshold current is. Uh, and we'll, we'll derive a more complete expression for the output power in terms of both, uh, both this power and this power. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel below. Uh, also, if you have any questions or comments, please post those down below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.